I can hear you. Okay, good. I can hear you too. I need to get the windows. Everyone can hear everyone. I'm gonna turn off this crappy orange light. You're at a you you have your you're are you back at home right now? You're not at work? Yeah, I'm at Spaceman Studios. Oh. Which is, you know, my office at home. Yeah. That's awesome. So how how was okay, so I we were there for your a lot of us were there. Well, I don't know how many people were there. I was there. Like, and I was, at, like two, three people were there. <laughs> no, no, no. So so you, I think it was the, the bit rate needed to be changed. That, uh, so I did change. I So I did the first test, which was just the default settings on Streamlabs. And mm-hmm. that was horrible. Mm-hmm. Then I pulled back on the bit rate. I set a cap. I restarted the stream. That was marginally less horrible, but still pretty horrible. It's still pretty bad. Yeah. So wait, it was, so take two, was take two equally bad? Not equally bad, but also bad. Oh. You know, like, it's just, it was still bad, but not as bad. So it was an improvement, but still bad. But still bad. It's still bad. Well, I can make us bigger. Look, we're bigger, and I have to I have to capture in the Ask a Spaceman so people know kind of what you, what you do at that studio, which AKA home. Yeah, it's just my house. Can you guys hear him okay? Is everything good? Um, I, Dr. Paul, I've seen you on the Weather Channel. Yeah, you were on That's the Weather right. Channel. I was on the Weather Channel from Ukraine, which was uh, nerve-wracking because when I was on... Y- on your stream last Tuesday, it would go out like every five or 10 minutes. I'd fuzz out for a few seconds Uh with, but the weather channel, they had me in on Skype and it was going out like every other minute. And they told me, they said, don't move your arms and try not to like waggle your head. Right. They don't want to just talk. Right. Oh my goodness. Like a talking picture. Really? And that was fun. And right when they introduced me, and they said, hey, and we've got astrophysicist Paul Sutter, it and cut did out. this? No. And I'm like, hey, he was Jazz so glad hands. to be on the Weather Channel. <laughs> and uh, it cut out right when they introduced me. And then they were about to move on to the next. I'm like, oh, I guess, you know, the connection didn't work. He is in Ukraine. And then I came back and we were able to do the segment. Oh, my gosh. It's a great story. But the adventure doesn't end there. No? <clears throat> because I said the, I said something wrong What'd on you the say? Weather Channel. Oh, you know, that happens even with really, really, really smart people. What I said something so wrong. What was so, it? So my notes from the producer was that, and I'm not trying to throw a weather channel under the bus. This is just like how live TV happens. My note from the producer was, we're going to briefly mention the solstice, and then we're going to go on and talk about the dust storms on Mars. Okay. Because they were still going on. Yeah. Like, and it's still happening. Yeah. And they ended up not talking about the Martian dust storm at all and just all sorts of questions about the solstice and started asking about like what would happen if the earth weren't tilted. And I don't know why I said this. Uh I don't know why I said the tilt of the earth is responsible for forming hurricanes. We were nervous. You were nervous. I was nervous. I was nervous about the stream. Yeah. I wasn't, I was just, I wasn't in the right space. It's the rotation of the earth causes the Coriolis force for hurricanes, right. not the tilt. Right. Well, okay. So yeah, but that, that's like a, it, it's a big change and people are probably like, wait, what? But then at the same time, it was, it, it, it that that's pure nerves. It was 100% nerves. I don't it happens think to me all I've, the time. Yeah, that's like your defining trait. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, and then I am, as soon as the, the segment was over, everything else I said was totally legit. I talked about how there is, they asked about ellipticity. Are we closer or farther from the sun? I said, yo, that doesn't really change our weather much. Talked about the seasons, length of days. Um, and, and basically, my point was 
Earth's weather wouldn't really change that much without the tilt. We would just have like locked in seasons. Right, like Uranus. Uranus yes. is almost, you know, 90 degrees, you know, on its side. Yeah, exactly. You know, see, like I, I know that, but it has like 40 year seasons or something. Yeah, because it's like doing this. Yeah, which is intense. I mean, I don't want summer for 40 years. Do you? And then, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm, I like summer, but then when summer gets a little bit, yeah, you know, when, when it's like September and it's still 80, 90 out, yeah. I'm, I'm done. So yeah, and even and even the the hosts were like, well, yeah, you know, I guess that's pretty cool. You know, he's an astrophysicist; he knows what he's talking about. But it happens. It happens. It happens, it happens. so much. And when you're live, that's the thing. Like that's the difference between YouTube and recording things. I mean, like I'm gonna go back and edit that. You yeah. know, like you can, you know, and it happens I'm gonna all the time. Get a memory hole that thing, right? And especially if you're nervous, like worried about, like when I have distractions you know, where, you know, I'm not having a good bit rate and I can tell that the stream is dropping or, you know, there could be so many different factors and it can, it mm-hmm. can completely throw off the information that, you know, even though you're trying to explain something, maybe you can do it like nine times out of 10, no problem. And then, you know, right. you get that, that one time out of 10 where it didn't work out. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, and then you can totally redeem yourself too. I mean, how many people? I, I, I immediately went on Twitter and I said, if you just watch me on the Weather Channel, I said that the tilt of the Earth causes the Coriolis force. Right. Yeah. People, you know, it is it is kind of incredible because there's a lot of people that do get like, whoa, they don't know their stuff. But the people that mm-hmm. actually pay attention, that watch us and follow us, they understand that that's a part of it. Yeah, it's and I get it. It's life, and the producers were fine with it because I fessed up. And it's just, <sighs> I'm booked for another segment. So, oh, I, are I guess you? It's all so, cool. is this like yeah, a thing that I, you're going to be doing more frequently? It's a regular thing. So, I let me see. I co-hosted their eclipse coverage last August, uh-huh. all day long. So, I was in Nashville with Jen Carfagno, and then Pamela was in Carbondale with Jim Cantori. Mm-hmm. And then someone else was supposed to be with Stephanie Abrams out in Colorado, but he bailed. Um, and then it was the our three sites were like the eclipse center for the Weather Channel's coverage. And so I did that all day long. Um, leading up to the eclipse last year, I was on once a week giving some cool fact about the sun. And then since then, I've been on once a month. I have a regular segment where it's just, uh, hey, we're going to bring in an astrophysicist to ask some really tough questions. And sometimes he gets it right. And sometimes he gets it right. Um, yeah, that's actually really cool. So, like, how, what what is the schedule for that completely? Like, is it is it solidified so you can... The next one, we're taking July off because there's nothing interesting and I'm traveling a bunch. And the next one is scheduled for Tuesday, August 14th. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's really cool. 40 a.m. Eastern. There you guys go. Put that in your calendars or not. Mess up the lines in theater. Because now there's like a a nail biter. Like, will he get it right? Oh, gosh. Now you can't carry that in there, though. Now there's pressure. Now there's pressure. Mm. I feel it weighing on me. Yeah. And that really takes away from it being good, too, because then you can mess up even more. Don't and you should have seen. I think I made a face when I realized I screwed up. Mm-hmm. I think my fake smile got even faker. Yeah, like I was like, you know, the normal happy smile, and then I'm like, wait, what did I just say? Yeah, it turned uh, into a yikes. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. and then they're like asking questions. I'm like, uh, n- n- no, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna was... take the middle road on everything here. See you guys, and I'm like, <laughs> wheel myself slide under the me. desk. <laughs> <laughs> that's the moment that's the moment i need like the cute kid to walk in right look look to baby the distraction <laughs> look baby <laughs> i know i have one too that works all the time i'll be like yeah so you know earth is only yeah maybe three billion years old too maybe six hundred thousand maybe just six thousand just baby. whatever <laughs> we're ballparking here <laughs> we're ballparking make some sticky notes for next time that's hard to you you can a lot of this stuff is just like off the top of us we have it all, like stored in the rolodex so sometimes 
you pick the wrong card or you. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly the, what the, the card catalog in my brain. Yeah. Said, OK, effects of tilt on Earth's weather. And instead of going there, it went over to the effects of rotation yep. on Earth's weather. Yep. And that, that and I happens. just pulled the wrong thing. And I was all happy and confident and cocky and, and just. And then you had the minute where you were like, wait, the minute oh, moment. Wait. See, I just did the Rolodex yeah. thing. I just said minute instead. I meant moment. There you go. It the even happens moment. with speech. Could it uh, could have done it with a hurricane and in itself instead of a kid. Yeah. And then just a hurricane happens. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. They could have winter for 40 years in Game of Thrones. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm pretty sure Game of Thrones planet is actually around a binary star where the binary companion is either obscured from view or very distant. Uh, so that has a chaotic orbit. Yeah. And let's see, there was someone that Peter asked a question that he put in the weekly space hangout slack. And I'm like, I'm not in that slack. <laughs> I'm Wrong not in slack. that. Yeah. Wrong slack. I, I, Tomorrow night is our season finale. Yeah, because you guys take a hiatus too, don't you? Yes, every Just, summer. Yeah, and that same thing with uh, Astronomy Cast. They do the same thing too. That's right. But Ask a Spaceman keeps going. It just keeps going. Me on your stream keeps going. Yes, except Space when you Radio, travel. Space Radio, we don't stop. <laughs> Space Radio, we do not stop. <laughs> so it, someone said, so anyway, watching Joe Scott and Anton, um, I, I thought about how we send probes to collect parts of the rings, parts of... The rings from the outer solar system, Skylius. What I asked was, oh, that's what you asked. Uh, I thought about how we send probes to collect parts of the rings in the outer solar system. How we do that? Do we do that? So we've sent probes into the rings of Saturn. Right, Cassini. Right. Cassini in its final moments did some splashes through, yeah. uh, got, got a taste of the ring material. Uh, but bringing stuff back from the outer solar system, like we're still trying to figure out how to bring stuff back from the surface of Mars. Uh huh. Yeah. And we spend a decade engineering missions that can do sample return missions from comets or asteroids. Outer solar system is such a tricky beast because if you want to if you want to send something back mm -hmm. that means you need the fuel to bring the thing back which means your whole mission is way heavier mm -hmm. which means it's going to take forever to get out there yep and to get back and to get back so it's like I don't know. It's like a, a, a 20 year mission, at least I would say like 25, 30 year mission for a sample return from the outer solar system. Yeah. Just and the time scales of, of dealing with things in our own backyard is almost mind boggling. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I, I just want us to go back to Uranus and Neptune. Oh, for sure. I think we need to learn a lot more about those planets. And yeah. I know there's a lot of interest right now on the Kuiper belt and the outer, outer, outer solar system, which is very well deserved because this is unexplored territory. Right. We're learning lots of cool things. But Uranus and Neptune are close up images. Like every time I mention them in a talk or a planetarium show, it's the same Voyager pictures. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Like, here we are. Right, right. And, and, and like, tell us more about Neptune. Well, I can't. Yeah, and, and, and Neptune's a real cool one, too. I mean, Uranus yes. is, too. Both of them are. Um, and technically, also, I, I'm sure you know this, Peter, but all of the the gas giants have, have rings, too. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of people don't know Jupiter has rings. Uh, and also, obviously, people do know Uranus does because they're people know. Um, and even Neptune. They all have rings. So, it, you know, is this, this is a good question. Yeah, are rings something that just all outer planets have? Right. Or is our solar system kind of special? Oh, yeah, that's why I said the outer solar system. Okay. I was just throwing that in there then. <laughs> acid rains. Um, I think the acid rain is more of a Venus thing. That could be a same, like, there's different kinds of things that happen with the gas giants. And they're definitely different between... Uh, Jupiter and Saturn, right? And even I think is it. I think it's Neptune and Uranus. Neptune. You get the diamond rain. Yeah, you get diamonds. Um, and that's atmospheric carbon, isn't that uh, atmospheric pressure allowing that to yeah. to happen? Yes. Yeah. 
so much cool stuff happens underneath those cloud tops. It is a very, a very exotic and mostly poorly understood states of matter. Yeah. And that's, that's acid rain is in the 1970s in it. What? Um, yeah, I know that, but why do giant gas stars have it? Wait, gas stars have what? Wait, hold on. Sorry. I'm trying to field questions, but I'm also, let's see. Oort cloud. Yeah. The Oort cloud, Oort cloud is very, mis that's a huge mystery. Mm-hmm. We're like 99% sure it's there. Yeah. Pretty sure. No, no reason for it not to be there. And we have some good circumstantial evidence that it should be there. Yeah. And that it's likely a sphere. Yeah. Sphere ish. Ish. I mean, because of orbits and things that we think might be coming in from there. Is that how we deduce things like that? That we get that sphere ish? Yeah. So those, those long period comets that we think are sourced in the Oort cloud, they come from all sorts of directions. Yeah. But I think it might be donutty shaped. Donutty? A little bit. Maybe. So DPI says, so we need an EM drive to get going on the return mission stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, what do, you, what do you think about that, Dr. Paul? What do you think about the EM, well, EM drive? EM drives don't exist. Can they exist? Uh, not in the way you hope they would. Okay. <laughs> uh, you can build a box. You can build a microwave, and your microwave start might start moving, not because you're breaking the laws of physics, but because you're not good at designing boxes. <laughs> Need a better engineer. Uh, let's see. Now it's a good mission getting the diamonds. I know, but I don't think diamonds are if I don't know, people aren't aren't seeking them as much. Uh let's see, wait, wait. Diamonds what? aren't cool anymore, haven't yeah. you heard? Yeah. You got the memo. <laughs> Duh. Oh wait, let's see. There's a field blocking all the rocks. Wait, why do we why do giant stars have rings? Oh, planets, giant planets have rings. That's, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. That's a good question. That's kind of what I mean. It's like icy material is in the outer solar system. Giant planets form in the inner, outer solar system. Giant planets collect the leftover icy bits. But then why does our largest planet have a very weak ring. Mm -hmm. Why does Saturn have this giant, ridiculously huge ring that there's a lot of mysteries with Saturn's rings, by mm -hmm. the way, by the way, like it, by the way, uh, like the fact that it's, it must be old uh -huh. because the only time a planet can accumulate that much stuff is when the solar system is very young and there's a lot of stuff just floating around. Right. But it is 99% pure water ice. And if it's billions of years old, it should have collected a lot of dust by now. So why is it so clean? Mm -hmm. And also Jupiter too, right? So Jupiter, well, Jupiter's different. Jupiter is definitely different in the fact that, I think we've talked about this. If you dropped uh, Saturn in a bathtub, it would float, whereas mm -hmm. Jupiter would mm -hmm. not. Um, right. But, you know, I think they were with the Juno mission, they're talking a lot about, you know, Jupiter had to have been the first planet formed. I think we're all kind of like, well, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. It gathered up a lot of the resources of, of our solar right. system. Um, but, you know, where did it form? Did it did it form in close? Did it get pushed out? Right, right. We know we're pretty dang sure there was a lot of migration in the early solar system. We're pretty sure there is at least one or two other planets formed along with the eight that survived, nine if you count Pluto, uh, but they got ejected from the solar system when it formed. Things shifted around. So, you know, there's a lot of questions just of what is this process? What is the process of solar systems in general and specifically our solar system? Mm -hmm. So There was once three Earths. Uh, there was Earth and there was Thea. Thea yeah, Thea or Thea. Thea? Thea, Thea, who's, Thea. Who's in charge of pronunciation? Kuiper, Kuiper. <laughs> yeah, what do you say? I say, I, I think I used to say, now I, I can't think of what I say. You said do I Kuiper. Say Kuiper? You said Kuiper. Kuiper? You went total Kuiper. Alan Stern. <laughs> yeah, I say Kuiper. But everybody, Kuiper. Says, everybody says Sharon, the moon of Pluto. I've heard Karen, but I've actually seen the guy that named it after his wife yeah sharon it's 
the Greek is a, is a hard C, so it's supposed to be Charon in like the Greek mythology, but he named it after his wife, Sharon. So, so Sharon. Sharon, yeah. Um, and so, so he named his, so he, yeah. when he saw like, oh, companion of the dark lord of the underworld. Wife. My wife. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or if that's a little bit of ego. I don't know if you my know? wife would be flattered by that. I mean, unless. She's like, couldn't you have given me like Saturn with the beautiful rings? Or Jupiter you know? even. Jupiter's. Jupiter. Yeah. The biggest planet. No, Big's a little, we're a little sensitive about largeness. Right. Right. And I bet Jupiter has a hell of an ego. <sighs> I mean, who I wrote. Wouldn't? I co-wrote a uh, a kids dance performance mm-hmm. with, about the journey of a little comet trying to find its place in the solar system, and it goes up and it meets all the planets, and all the planets tell it what it has to do to be a planet. Uh-oh. Like Mercury says, "Oh, you gotta be fast." Earth says, "Oh, you gotta be full of life," and Jupiter is is the big old boasty one that says i'm the king ah get out of my way and all that like barely even gives the comet any time yeah but then but you know what jupiter could say or the comet could say to jupiter what could the comet say to jupiter you are a doubly failed star you're not just a failed star you're a doubly failed star you needed like 80 to 90 times your own mass and you didn't cut it by the way not even minor league star yeah not even brown dwarf doubly fared or failed Savage, I know. <laughs> uh, failed. Yes, that would be good. So we should stick to mining the moon and then Phobos and Deimos first. Why would we mine Phobos and Deimos? Do, do people Phobos not- Phobos and Deimos, I don't think they have anything interesting. Yeah, well, they're totally potato moons, but don't people want to go to Mars and, and just- And to be clear, they're not made out of potato material. Right. No. Like star cheese. No, it, it just, they just look rock. like them. They look like them. One looks yeah. like a cashew. No, you look, you could put some rosemary and some thyme on those, <laughs> a little bit of olive oil. Put them in bring the them in close to the sun. No, just bring them close to the sun. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. For, for, you know, 45 minutes and then bring them back out. And yeah. Nice and tasty, crisp skin on the crust. And and, and, I, would, salt on and I think if you're going to go to Mars, it would be a really cool thing to be like, I have two moons, even though they're totally pretty much captured asteroids. I don't think asteroids. they count. I don't think they I know count. they're captured asteroids. That's what I'm saying. Come on. Mm-hmm. Come on, Mars. I know. It's like it's like Mars is that that jealous kid in high school mm-hmm. where Earth is the genuinely cool kid that has like a big moon. Oh, yeah. And then the jealous kid is like, well, well, I have two moons. It mm-hmm. just grabs two random asteroids and calls them moons. And yeah. like no one believes it. Right. Just grabs those asteroids. But but Earth can be like, I made that. I mean, that's from me. That's from me. And I made Ooh, that. Someone mentioned Raclette. Yeah. Good for you. DPI. DPI yeah. I know. I know. What about Titan? What about Titan? Titan's pretty cool. Titan's pretty, pretty, and I'm not being at all. Titan's punny. in my top five of yeah. best moons in the solar system. Yeah. What's your first? Europa. Yeah. Europa's kind of mine too. Way, way to be original. Kinda... Way to be original, Dr. Paul. Hey, I said it first, actually. Well, let me guess. Wait, is your next one Enceladus? Nah. No. Enceladus is a copycat. Yeah, it is. It is Europa. pretty much just like everything Europa. Enceladus says Europa does better. <laughs> is the next one, let me guess, Triton? Nah. It no? just looks like a stupid cantaloupe. It does look like a cantaloupe, but it looks like they a They call it cantaloupe one. terrain. It, it totally looks like a cantaloupe. I can I can actually bring that up right now. We could we could look yeah. at its cantaloupe features. Um what okay, so what's your second then? Because a uh, second might be might be uh Triton. Titan. Wait. Oh. Titan. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, no, I think I think I like Triton. Triton has those cool nitrogen, you know, geysers. Yes. Yeah. Totally. That's does. all right. But who doesn't have nitrogen geysers these days? <laughs> so played out. Uh, and then Sharon. Sharon's really up there. Because something really, really nasty happened to Sharon. What do you mean? Just because of the like the residue that looks very similar to Pluto's uh, rusty oh, residue? The giant freaking scar on its surface. <sighs> like it looks like two moons glued together by a toddler. I don't know. Now I'm going to want to go look at Sharon. 
a nice bit of brie. Peter's starting to talk about cheese. Peter, how dare you? Um, what about I'll in go for brie? <laughs> I'll have, maybe I should have raclette for dinner tonight. There we go. Wait, wait. So have we really found out that there are water oceans under Titan? I know that ethane and methane oceans are on the surface, uh, but I hear now that ocean uh, that the oceans could be under the surface. And wait, like water oceans, like saline, saline, like. Yeah, I think I heard this too. Uh, what? Subsurface oceans, Titan. I'll let you look that up. Cassini go. finds likely subsurface ocean on Saturn moon. A global subsurface ocean. Where is this? Oh, is this the scar? Is this it? Can you see my screen? Can you see my scar? Can you can you see the, the scar on Sharon? Is that it? I think so. Let me see. I'll pull up your stream. Because I'm wondering if that's it. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah? Because I'm not seeing... It, it like it stretches like across the entire surface. Yeah, that, that kind of looks like it does. Some of this is going to be blurry because what's really cool about Space Engine is they only take the parts that have actually been mapped. Mm -hmm. So if you see sides that aren't mapped, they look pretty blurry like this. Um, but the stuff that has been mapped, they've done a pretty good job at... at oh, wow. I don't think they've ever like really... You know, I've never really looked at that. There's now people are going to do poor Pluto's in the chat probably, but it's okay. Aww. So yeah, go on about but Sharon, that. Sharon's fascinating. Well, yeah. We I'm think we think, and, and again, this is based on so little data mm -hmm. that the Sharon might be linked to that giant heart shape feature on Pluto. Oh, because is it, is it, if I remember right, the heart shape feature is, is, you know, so Pluto and Sharon are tidally locked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the heart shape feature is always on the same side, either the same side it faces Sharon or it's on the opposite side. Um, that's interesting. Thank you, Art, for gifting a sub. Uh, Europa Moon got better ocean. Yeah, but we don't know how far down the ocean is. Um, and that's, that's going to be an interesting part. So, so yeah, so he just linked the article. Are you looking at it? Cause I, I have not heard about this, about there being a subsurface ocean on Titan. I, I vaguely remember this. This is from, I'm reading an article back from 2012. Whoa. It's like ancient history. Wait, he just linked it again. Hold on. I'm okay. I'm pulling it up Based too. Com. This one's from 2012. 12. Yeah. I don't know if this is held up because I haven't heard any more about it. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard anything about that either. I think I would, because I really like Titan. We actually had a guy on here. Uh, I think his name is Dr. Jason Barnes, and he did a lot of research and stuff with Titan. Nice. Yeah. Got a guy. Yeah. No, he, it, yeah, it's. A Titan guy. A Titan guy. Yeah, he is all about it. It was really cool on um, Pluto and Sharon have a cute love story. Yeah, so with a side of domestic violence, sort of. Yeah, it's, it gets a little rough. It does get a little rough. And, and, and you know, their mass is not too different. Like, that's why Pluto, you know, that Pluto really can't decide, okay, well, you know, you're going to be a moon and you're going to orbit me. I'm going to also be completely manipulated by my own moon. Pluto's manipulated by Sharon. They're just codependent. I okay, mean okay, I guess. You know, that's, that is, I like that. That's a good euphemism. Um, oh, and you may hear uh, screaming children in the background. It's okay. I assure you that's totally normal. Yeah, no, I I don't even notice it. You know, I I'm I've got my own, so I understand. This is just like second nature to me. <laughs> even are, that they're coming in from the pool, and they oh, are they, tired they and loud. Tired. Like that, that tired but amped up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, swimming like exhausts them. Oh yeah, that's why we do it every single day. Yeah, I know it's great. Even in the winter, they nap so. Long. I know in the winter too. Yeah, they nap but forever. It's snowing out. Get in the pool. <laughs> Get in the pool. Business you need inside. a nap. I know. It is. That's so true. What's this one? Uh, Peter just posted another one. Let's see. Hey, if you want my dungeon to be soundproof, that's patreon.com/slash/pmsutter. <laughs> 
to be soundproof. Uh, your dungeon is not soundproof. So, so that's the other thing. That's that's a thing. There, there really isn't soundproofing. It's more about not having the echo. That is, that is just a, sound deadening. Yes. Um, so there's no really like even these little cardboard thing or not cardboard. They, everybody calls them my eggshell styrofoam mm -hmm. things. That's that's for just keeping you know putting things in there in a room so it doesn't echo. It's not soundproofing. The more you know. Today you learned. There you go. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, no. A lot of people say like, I need good soundproofing gear. It's not soundproofing. It's 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 canceling echo. Uh, I'll sell all my empty egg boxes, Doctor Paul. Sure, and I'll staple them to my walls, the walls of my office that I meticulously decorated. Yeah, I'll just I'll just gr gorilla glue some egg cartons up there. Call it a day. Okay, so we got another article. Saturn's Moon Titan has surprisingly salty oceans lurking under its surface. This one's from 2014. Man, come on, guys. Yeah, we need something, something more, more same recent. In, same infographic. Yeah. From the 2012. So NASA obviously didn't think this was a big enough deal to make a new graphic. Yeah. It is probably just trying to maintain the the Titan hype. Like, don't forget about Titan because it's cool. Because Titan is cool. Oh, Amy Shira Tatel wrote this article in 2014. I didn't know this was her her bag. Have you had Amy on your show? Uh-uh. Who's that? Uh, Amy Shira Tatel. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm sure she <laughs> says it a million times if I actually watched her stuff. Um, She's she's the uh, like the retro astronomer or something like she'll talk about history of rocketry. I think she has a book either out or coming out. Oh, that would be actually interesting. She's a, a big YouTuber. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm so bad with like the bigger YouTubes. than me. I don't know why you're wasting your time with people like me because because you're funny and, and you're I'm smart adorable. and and hurricanes come from the tilt of and I'm Earth. cheaper than Phil Plate. See Phil Plate. He's expensive, but he gets stuff right. So, you know, no, there's no, no, there. you know, no, you know, it's funny. You know, it's funny is I, when I had him on here for the, that partner spotlight week, he even mm -hmm. said that he's, I was talking about how sometimes I get information wrong and he's like, yeah, it happens to me all the time. So, and I even have that. If you go to my YouTube and you will hear Phil Plate say that it is nice. Yes. So if you're feeling we get bad, a mix of that, right. Like to, so, you know, so a, a beat that I can play. <laughs> As I'm crying in the corner after a live appearance. Phil Plate can get things wrong. Um, and Plate is funny. Matt is sarcastic. I like sarcastic better. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, who's Matt? This is Paul. I'm Matt. Well, middle name. Middle name. But also <laughs> works. It does. Or just Dr. Sutter. I mean, you can. Let's, yeah. let's go straight to the front. <laughs> Dr. Sutter. <laughs> Um, so let's see, there was, there was another thing in here too. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, no. I wanted to talk to you about this. It's kind of new news and it hasn't hit anything that I've seen in my email. So I have had no, uh -oh. I've had no you press get email? releases. You get your news emailed. You get press releases. I do. You were tuned in. Yeah. But sometimes I, it's not tuned in enough because then I get things where like I had somebody came into my chat and I wish you were here, but, um, he's, He's usually in my chat, and he, he actually came in with something uh, about a supernova that they just... Okay. Have you heard about? Uh, I will just type it in the chat. Supernova, I think it was, what? Is it 2018-COW? Okay. So that just happened. So when I search for supernova 2018-COW, I get uh, something about the dairy agenda. I know. There's actually the astron astronomers telegram dot org that talks oh, a lot yeah. about it. AT. Transient event. Like this actually was posted yesterday. I just posted that in chat too. If you want to pull that one. Uh, up. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm reading the Wikipedia about it. 
Yeah, the Wikipedia is botched. Like, there's they actually do reference the right telescopes in the Wik- Wikipedia, but some of their references. I, w- I was showing ah, everybody okay. how bad space news happens because they were talking about um, the Atlas being on the Big Island, which it's part of Haleakala uh, with the Pan Star. And the facts, right? yeah, see, one. I don't know that kind of stuff. I don't keep track of that. I only keep track of certain things, not everything, because not enough. I don't have a big enough Rolodex. So, um, but yeah, they're, they're kind of, I'm thinking it looks like a GRB, a gamma ray burst, but I don't know. Like, what do I know? Um, they released a bunch of stuff. If you go to the astronomers, telegram.org, mm-hmm. uh, you'll see from, you know, we stopped yesterday at, at 11, uh, 776. So anything that's past that above it is all new. It looks like they were doing um, spectroscopy on it as a type 2 supernova before maximum light. Okay. So maybe they are calling it a type 2. Yeah, I'm reading through the the notices now. Yeah, I wanted to have you look at this. So go ahead and take your time because it's all the telescopes in Hawaii are keck. I know. <laughs> Atlas. Um. Yeah, that's... Gotta love disinfo. It was bad, but it was it was good that he brought it up because I didn't hear about this. I don't think this These is... light curves though are really noisy. They're weird. Man. Yeah. Fifteen telescopes were able to look at it, and it was actually because they were looking for NEOs. And they they found this. Oh really? And it just got lucky? Yeah. And they were using Atlas, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, this is about 200 million light years away. So we're thinking we caught a potential gamma ray burst with a bunch of telescopes at once? Well, I don't know if it's a GRB. They don't really, they're, they're kind of skirting around even calling it a supernova. They don't know what it yeah. is because it's kind of being really funky. Um, I haven't been able to look at any of the information today on it, but it's being very, very weird. And so, the, you know, the Astronomer's Telegram is all about supernovae. Um, yeah, for sure. They started classifying, like, putting tags on it for gamma ray bursts. Um, but I don't know for sure, obviously. Um, I mean, I'm not sitting here analyzing just this. These are, these are the, the pros. Um, islands have less light surrounding them, though. Yeah. You can't just say weird like that. What do you mean weird? <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 200 million light years away. Is that what you said? Yeah. It's coincident with the ga- oh, with the particular galaxy. And so we know the distance to that galaxy. So if it took place in that galaxy, then this is the distance to that event. Yeah, I'm wondering if... Oh, this, I'm reading the Atlas report on it Mm -hmm. and they say it's most likely it is a foreground cataclysmic variable, which is just a normal Nova in chance alignment with the galaxy. Oh, so that's what made it super bright. Like it was just close. Huh? Interesting. What is this just joining in? So we're talking about, they, there was this thing that they observed. It's also known as AT. I'll put that in chat. AT 2018 um, COW. Like they they have different. Yeah, because the different uh, the different observatories tag these events with their own name. Right. So that'd be and Atlas. later they go back and say, oh, this was all the same thing. They're all tied together, and so we'll give it a new name like Stephen. But until then, it gets these catalog numbers. Mm-hmm. So it's also Atlas 18 QQN. I'll put that in the. In the yeah, chat. it has a bunch of different names. Yeah, they said continued optical fading and weakening of spectral spectral features. Um. So we're we're kind of Audio Technica. No. Um. But let's see. Islands have less light surrounding them, though. What? Do we, what? Yes, that is. That is. 
Also, the volcanoes that they put these uh, telescopes on are a pretty decent elevation considering, um, I think Haleakala is like 10,000 feet, maybe maybe 11,000. Um, and the, the gamma ray and X-ray detection is at, they're claiming it's at three sigma. Yeah. So you can't tell if that's something interesting or it's just random bumps and wiggles in the noise. Yeah, Swift BAT data search. Yeah, three sigma detections are roughly consistent with new star flux measurements. Uh, and then they said, however, we note that due to low significance of these detections, we cannot rule out that these are due to noise fluctuations. So an event definitely happened. Mm -hmm. We're wondering, it, so either, and it's pretty bright. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is it intrinsically very, very extremely bright and we're seeing it from halfway across the universe or whatever? Or is it just kind of averagely, boringly bright and it happens to be close? Did something happen? Uh, no, we're just talking about a, a potential supernova that they were looking at um, with, with a telescope and, it, it, yeah. Do you want to summarize what we're talking about real quick? Maybe in, in better we're, terms as an astrophysicist? So something blew up <laughs> in our universe. A bunch of telescopes happened to be catching it. If this thing in, in this thing blew up in the direction of a galaxy 200 million light years away, if this thing blew up in the galaxy, it's very interesting because it must be very, very powerful. If it didn't, if it just happened to be a coincidence where this thing was in our line of sight to that galaxy, but it's really much closer and it blew up, then it's not very interesting at all. And my reading of this is we're still trying to figure that out, but it lean, it's leaning towards not interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though it was, it sounded pretty interesting, but maybe this is also why I probably didn't get any information, you know, anywhere. But, you know, all the YouTube channels are like, what is this? You know, the, are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I, I, I someone dropped the link um, and the guy got all the information, like not all of it, but he got a good amount of it wrong. Um, and so it was, it, I, that's where it took me on hey, the tangent. Hey, welcome to the Weather Channel. It fit right in. <laughs> so is these like YouTubers who have to go on, like do at least 15 minute videos a day? No, these are, this is probably like a, not even a 10 minute one, but just like bringing in all of the, uh, all of the bad science. All the bad science. Yeah. So someone actually asked about, um, uh, are there any other planets around Proxima or Alpha Centauri? I can't think of the third, third star's name. Alpha Centauri is Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B. And then there's Proxima Centauri. Right. Um, I know Proxima is bad for life, but what about the other two? I don't, I'm, I don't know. Do they, they, they probably have exoplanets. So Proxima has the exoplanet. Yeah. What about A and B for Alpha Centauri? I think if I'm remembering right, I think there were hints of planets around Alpha Centauri because Alpha Centauri uh, A and B mm -hmm. uh are a very, very tight binary. So they're orbiting really, 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 really close around each other. And then Proxima is way out here orbiting that companion as if it was a single star. Right. So Proxima has the planet around it. I think there were maybe hints, but it's really, really hard with binary stars because they're constantly eclipsing each other. Right. Uh, so it's hard to get a, a pin down on any planets in those systems. Right. So let's see. Yeah, because I'm looking at an article right now. It looks like some people at UC Boulder represent astrophysics in space. I know. That's that's my home. That's from that's my, that's my home. My home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where I'm yeah. from. Um, let's I, see. So I don't think that they said anything. Uh, yeah, Proxima B is not likely suitable for life because we found out that, yeah, Proxima Centauri is not a, not a nice red dwarf star. Um. Wait, let's see. Alpha Centauri A and B are closely associated with each other, but more distant uh, from Earth. The study also evaluated these stars for the ability to nurture planets. In the case of Alpha Centauri B, an exoplanet, 
there would be an encounter five or six times more. They would encounter five or six times more X-ray radiation than Earth. <sighs> yeah, that's not good. Lost Superman. Yeah, you guys don't. We don't even do well with a you know a quick X-ray. <laughs> very very fast. Uh, why are we leaning towards it not being interesting? What the the supernova thing? Oh, because it was we were, he was looking at the, the actual data that came in, it, and it sounds like yeah. it's probably not. <laughs> it, I mean, it's interesting in the sense of cataclysmic variables, things that blow up are interesting, but it's not extraordinarily interesting. That's a good way of saying that. Eighty six. neat. 86,000 light years to get there. To get where? Not to... Oh, 80, 87,000 years to get there. To the Centauri system. Yeah, it's like more like 65,000 to get to Proxima Centauri. I mean, how fast are you going? Are you including 35, your deceleration phase or are you just going to blast by? I'm just going to... I'm going to use a gravitational assist from Jupiter. I'm going to go at like 35,000 miles per hour. Okay. And I'm just going to go, you know, 4.2 light years away. And I'm going to have the mass of, you know, I'm going to be like the New Horizons probe because that was the fastest probe. It was. Mm -hmm. So that's 2.469 times 10 to the 13 miles. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do it at 35,000 miles per hour. Yeah, it could be like 68. I think we agree. So on you've, you've got like, what is that, 70 million hours? And we'll put it in years. We're talking 80,000 years. 80,000? At 35,000 miles an hour. Okay, so I've been saying it wrong. Fact check. Oh, man, I was like 15,000 off. Busted. I was 15,000 off. Eh, you can make up for it. Just don't <laughs> stop to pee. So and fine, we'll just go with 80,000. And shave some. This is standard road trip rules, and you'll make it. <laughs> It was 15,000 years off, guys. Yeah, that's how long it would take to get to our nearest star if you were traveling as the New Horizons probe. Did you, wait, did, wait, did you take the mass did, of that? Did you calculate that in there? The mass of what? Well, did you actually just like, I mean, what? how heavy are we? Uh, it doesn't matter. 35,000 Oh, 35, miles that doesn't hour. matter. Never mind. Just joking. That's, just that's leaving uh, Earth. Never mind. Never mind. Just, just joking. <laughs> See, look. Look, if I were on the Weather Channel... <laughs> you, you, they'd, they'd sign you up to be a host right now. They'd be like, can you come back, please? Like tomorrow? Tomorrow. If you use a solar sail, will you get there? You Okay, solar sail. If you use a solar sail, you'll never get there. Uh, solar sail. Ion drive. Oh, my God. Okay, here comes all the ideas. What do you, what do you think for, for going fast? There's no good idea to go fast. Maybe. Not for something the size of... A human being, not for something the size of New Horizons. There's just no, we got nothing. Yeah. Interstellar distances are vastly bigger than our experience here on Earth. Hold on, wormholes. Don't, don't get me started. Well, someone said that. I, I get fielded that question all the time. And then. Yeah, wormholes don't exist. So can't use them because. They're right up there. Might as well ride your unicorn out to Proxima Centauri. <laughs> Does it have glitter? E well, so glitter is going to slow you down. Oh, yeah. But it's going to be more magical. Someone just said so, wormholes only exist if you can go back in time. Wormholes don't exist ever. Yes. Oh, now you're just going crazy. You're 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 putting everything with a uh, JLV 2018 wormhole in a Dyson sphere. Now you're just taking like everything that I can't stand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and putting it all into one sentence. JLV just loves you. JLV put the put if you can get the Drake equation in there, <laughs> we'll be good to go. JLV is awesome in that he knows us so well. He did, and that's also you know a forge, which that's that's actually Mars with the 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 derp face. Nice. E, e equals that MC. I always thought Mars was a little bit cooler. I, Not derpy. I, I mean, it's kind of derpy. Remember, we were talking about how Earth is the cool oh, yeah. kid. And yeah, see, see, is teleportation possible? I don't know much about sciences at all, but I read that it, if it teleports you something, his particles, or I don't know, will all get destroyed on the travel, so it's impossible. 
teleportation is possible, but not in the cool way you're thinking of. Like teleporting from upstairs to downstairs by walking. <laughs> <laughs> by walking. As in if you're a quantum, a subatomic particle in an exotic quantum state, you can be teleported. But so if you're an electron, you might be able to be teleported. Information teleportation, only quantum states, someone said. There it is. Um, it would disintegrate you. How about quantum teleportation of a state person? We just did it. Did it and then, wait, wait, wait. Scientists can teleport light. Yeah, yeah, photons. We can teleport photons, electrons. But the word teleportation here is being a little bit abused. <laughs> Nothing like that's ever abused in my chat, ever. I will have you know, I, I get asked all the logical questions. Um, uh, right, that uh, black holes in reverse, that is math, but it is, wait, black holes in reverse? So, yeah, what? Yes. Mm. Just, just yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means wormholes. Fascinating. Which means wormholes can exist too. How, how, Mantis? Uh, with electrons, though, because okay, from on today, I I identify as electron. Me too. Um, I hate reverse black hole mortgages. Almost got sucked into one of those. <laughs> Dissolution. <laughs> uh, black holes in reverse are white holes and do not exist. Yes, this is another thing people come in. They're like, what do, what do you think about white holes? Uh, white holes are uh, unstable. So if you were to make one, it would blow up instantly. And why is that? Because, uh, so white holes are in reverse where, uh, so a black hole, if you fall below the event horizon, you can't get out. Mm -hmm. A white hole, you cannot enter the mm -hmm. event horizon, which means uh, the closer and closer you put a particle, like if it's being gravitationally attracted by the white hole and it's getting closer and closer to the white hole, it's getting more and more energetic to the point where if it comes to the event horizon, it becomes infinitely energetic. And uh, that, that extreme amount of energy ends up distorting the space time of the white hole to such a degree that the white hole evaporates. Yeah. And, so it's and a if you think, okay, I just won't put stuff in there, but then there's uh, vacuum fluctuations, which are going to end up doing the same thing. So as soon as a, a white hole forms, mm -hmm. it evaporates. <laughs> Rip a hole in space time. But that's, that's, that's a black that's hole. A black hole. We got those. We, we, yeah. They're, they're all over the place and they come in different masses and, you know, some are, some are dieting. Some are actually eating things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we got. We're some are living life. Yeah, and uh, let's see. Wait, some can, are on keto. <laughs> someone said, "Can you can dark energy teleport?" Oh, hi, Redwater. Uh, can dark energy teleport? See this? Okay, can I just can, for one second? This is why I get so we'll take angry. A break. Everyone, take a pause. This is why I, I get mad. Some off her chest, I like. do because 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 we have science naming things like dark energy because we don't understand it because it's dark. Same with dark matter. And we're like, yeah, this is yeah. a good way to name this. Like dark, we don't know anything. Matter because it kind of behaves like matter. You know, energy. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of a repulsive force, sort of, kind of. You know, it's expansion yeah, stuff. Yeah, but you know, yeah, but dark yeah. energy sounds so cool. It sounds super cool. And it sounds I'm even cooler. I'm surprised that the... Like that? Uh, like the, the weirdo, mystic, self-healer people haven't attached themselves to the term because they've, they've picked up quantum. The other day, I got invited to a, a premiere in New York for some new center. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they said, we're reaching out to you because you're a cosmologist and we thought this would be interesting. But it's all about like, you know, new agey kind of healing weirdo stuff. And then I looked at who, who the founders were. And the, one of the founders calls herself a cosmologist and planetary healer. What? Yeah, a cosmologist and a planetary healer. And... um she has a bunch of books on the topic of how the universe is like speaking to you and wants you to live a better life or something. Um, 
So I told the publicist, this is a, a mockery of my profession, insult to the hard work of my colleagues, and I will not be attending. And then you found out she was actually a cosmetologist. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can totally make your life better. Hey, cosmology is just studying the makeup of the universe. Yeah. The makeup. Mm -hmm. Can't see it. Yeah. They but yeah, so I'm surprised they haven't gotten taken that term dark energy and used it for something else or well, dark cause, matter. Cause like, cause the they, they took quantum, they took, you know, vibration, they took energy. Yeah. They took field. Right. Magnetic fields. <laughs> that sounds so cool always, but you know, like this Magnetic is the thing fields. you can put these words together. You can say something like uh, dark energy teleportation or dark mm -hmm. energy black holes. And it sounds super cool. Like, I would love to yeah. be like, that's amazing. But however, it's because like the word dark energy, I think that's where a lot of people get these ideas that, you know, I don't know, just let's make it sound cooler. And I might bit rate. Like, yeah, just dark and just toss dark energy in there and we're good to go. Yeah, just dark energy uh, wormholes. Yeah. See? And now if 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 we were smart, we could sell all the masses bad science and say that they're related, yeah. that we know things that we don't know. But we really what do we know about dark energy, Dr. Paul? We know that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. OK, so not only is the universe getting bigger and bigger every day, it's getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster every day. That's about it. Yeah. That's, that's about it. That's Actually, next. Oh, it's funny you ask. What? Look. Oh, how does dark energy accelerate the universe? And right here, I don't know if you can see it. Question mark. Question mark. And a bunch of question arrows going mark. out. Out. Around the question mark. I have an episode. Uh, so the next episode of Ask a Spaceman will be about entanglement. You haven't done the quantum entanglement one yet? It, it, I've recorded it. It's coming out. Oh, that's right. And it features hilarious cheese metaphors of my of own devising. Mm -hmm. And uh, the episode after that. So that will drop. The entanglement episode comes out a week from today. It'll be out on the 3rd. And then on the 17th, there'll be an episode on dark energy. And how like what our best guess about dark energy is and why that's a really bad guess, but we got nothing better. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And you guys can see, uh, I've been posting his link in there. You guys can follow all the stuff there too. Oh yeah. Co Master coupon. Perfect. Remember to put some tachyons in there. Yeah. But just throw in a dark energy. Wait for it. Dark energy. Um, 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 we'll just say, uh, uh, God, Dyson. I'm Dyson sphere or swarm. Dyson swarm is much more modern, I think. So tachyon, yeah, Dyson swarm, dark energy, white holes. Tachyon neutrino <sighs> antiparticle. Don't one up me. I thought I was doing good. Can we get Big Bang in there? <laughs> yeah. A false vacuum. False vacuum. False vacuum. Dig deep. Oh, reverse. Yeah. Don't forget the reverse. Uh, the the polar. Yeah. The polarity, yeah. The polarity, we gotta, yep. Which I can do that, but just flipping the plug around, right? I mean, in theory. It's, it's just, <laughs> what's the purpose of neutrinos? What's the purpose of you, Keeble92, huh? I know. He, Mind your own business. <laughs> um, wait, let's see. If gravity turns out to be just uh, geometry of space. Uh, Which it is. Yeah. According to general relativity, our, our best picture of gravity. And we find no gravitons at the Large Hadron Collider. Does that mean that we have the uh, TOE, just two parts, gravity as the geometry and QFT? So TOE, toe is theory of everything. Right. Because, of course, and QFT is quantum field theory, the best of the field theories. And... No, if, if, so if we don't find the graviton ever, then it means that we don't yet have an understanding of quantum gravity. And even if we do find a graviton, it doesn't mean that we have a, a complete description of quantum gravity. 
we just have a theory of gravity and we have a theory of everybody else and that's it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's a good one. Reverse tachyon, anti anti chromo. Yeah, neutronic gravito. Neutronic gravito. 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 Is that like mag- magneto but yeah. for gravity? Yeah, entangled black hyperquasar. Hyper. Good mix of subatomic and astrophysical terms there. I, I like know. that. I think that that person wins. Absolutely. There is no prize, but you still win. Uh Uh-huh. And we still, we need to plan. So I know you said you're going to be traveling a lot in July. We need to plan you and Fraser having this, this discussion about how Fraser doesn't believe that there's, there's other life out there. Um, the great debate that you're going to moderate. Yeah. The great debate that I'm going to moderate, mostly just laughing and, 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 you know, because I feel like I'm a little bit biased, but I have to remove. You can make, you can, you can give us ridiculous debate rules. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, uh, okay, Paul, you have 30 seconds for rebuttal, but you can only use words that start with the letter C. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to work on that with my chat. My chat will have to help. This could I know. Be... So I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like half scientific debate uh-huh. between people who you know, are just making it up as they go along and half whose line is in any way. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and making that. Do it now. And that'll we be our discussion. We can't do it now. We have to wait till Fraser. We have to find a day that Fraser and him are both available, and then we'll have it on here on stream. Fraser doesn't have a real job. You can bring him on anytime. Well, he's going to get more freed up with you guys all going on. Well, not you, but all the hiatuses that are happening with, with you know, just summer break for Astronomy Cast and, and, and Weekly Space Hangout. I'll be traveling, but I should be able to maintain oh. my presence on this program. Is this? Do you consider this a program? What do I call it? Just a stream? Yeah, stream. Okay. Oh, yeah. Buffalo, buffalo, buffalo. The longest word, sentence you can make with only one word. But wait, wait, wait. So, <laughs> oh, Filthy Jester says he wants to see you improv with the C now. Uh, no, I can't do it. Yeah, I haven't asked the question. I have to come up with a question, right? Or a rebuttal. No, it was a rebuttal. A 30-second rebuttal. Oh, yeah. No, we can't. Yeah. <laughs> He's really so trying to do it, it right it'd now. It would just be a disaster. Yeah. So. Um, so I think, I mean, yeah, you're past. You're over. You have to go back to, to family, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the house is starting to quiet down, which must mean it's nap time. Yeah, which means you uh, get to do things. Which or, means I go back. I'm, I've been taking a couple of days off. I'm I'm working on backyard improvement projects. Oh, yeah. oh, white holes almost certainly don't exist. They don't exist, guys. They just don't. They just don't. You heard it from an astrophysicist, and I'm not an astrophysicist. And I'm in charge of these th- kinds of things. My word is law. Yeah, space law. <laughs> space law. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you so much. And Always a blast. Yes, guys, you can Not find him. Not unlike that silly little supernova we talked about a little bit ago. Right. Right. That that was not not a blast. Which which had potential. So this is a very good metaphor. It had potential to be absolutely fascinating. Turned out to just be kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And you guys, he is on every Tuesday. Unless Tuesday. something change Tuesday, unless something changes, Tuesday. all of this information's right there. Follow him and you have a wonderful remainder of your day. That's right. I'll see you next week. Sounds good. Take it easy, guys. Mm-hmm. Bye. Let's see over here. So there's Dr. Paul. I know a lot of you guys. Well, not a lot of you guys, not a lot of you guys, but some of you guys. Have been watching me play puzzle games and you might have followed me then which i highly doubt because nobody goes into those games <laughs>